Hello and welcome to part 38 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.6. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to animate shape keys in order to allow this alien to blink. Alright, so for this video we're going to be using this alien head, or at least I will be. You can follow along by downloading the file from the description area below. Um, this is nothing really too special. I created it in about 15 or 20 minutes, but it serves the purpose for now. This alien head has two modifiers left on it. If I select it and then go up to my modifiers tab, the wrench tab in the properties window, you can see that I have two modifiers, the mirror modifier, which if I hide it, you can see that I only actually modeled half of this alien head and the mirror modifier created the other half for me. And then I have the subdivision surface modifier, which of course smooths out the mesh from its original modeled uh, state. So for this lesson, we're actually going to be creating shape keys, which are different states of the vertexes uh, in the mesh. That sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. If I go up to the object data tab and I open up the shape keys section, you can see that we have an area where we can create different shape keys by pressing the little plus button. Now, before we do that, though, it's important to decide if we're going to apply that mirror modifier uh, before or leave it on. And what this is going to mean is because I only really have half of that model, uh, if I leave it as it is, I'll only be able to um, model one half of the character or change one half of the character, and it'll automatically change on the other side of the alien head, which means if I animate a blink on this side, it'll happen on that side as well. And then that might, might make it easier to animate a blinking or the character blinking, uh, but if we wanted him to wink, uh, in other words, just blink one eye, that wouldn't be possible the way that we're doing it now, although I think you'll get the idea. You could do each side separately uh, in the same way that I'm doing just both eyes at once. So I'm going to leave the mirror modifier uh, on there as it is without applying it, and we'll leave the subsurf modifier there as well. So over to the object data tab, the little triangle tab in the, in the properties window, I've got my alien head. It's still named Q1. I'm going to go ahead and change that. But before I change that, I'm going to go ahead and save. Um, this as a new file because I'm going to be giving you that other file. So I'm going to call this uh, alien head start underscore CG Borman and press save as blender file. So now I'll be giving you this alien head file in the description area below. All right, so let's go ahead and create our first shape key. The first shape key that you always create uh, is called basis and that's because it serves as the default pose of the model which you're creating a shape key animation for. So I'll press the plus and it's called basis. Uh, you can of course change that name if you like, but this basis is kind of a special state. You don't want to really want to touch it or, or change it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and press plus again, and this one will call blink. So I'm gonna change that name from key one to blink and press enter. I'm just gonna make sure, yes, I do have my keys pressed displaying down there as well. Okay, so this is what really happens when we animate. If we have two different states of this mesh and we change the mesh in this blink uh, shape key, we can actually go ahead and change where the position of the vertex is and we can animate its value. If I slide this value slider up and down, you can see that it's going all the way from zero all the way up to 100% or there we go, 100% uh, applied. So if we now if we make changes to the mesh while we have that blink state or shape key selected, um, it will actually change the mesh when we slide this bar up and down. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode. Now we want the eyelid of the character to rotate or the top to rotate down and the bottom to rotate up so they meet at the very middle which means that we really want um, the uh, mesh of the eyelids uh, to rotate around the middle point between, I'm going to be in edge select mode here, between that edge right there, I'm going to hold shift, and that edge there. We really want, if I go to my side view and go into orthographic view with the number pad 5 key, so number 3, number uh, 3 key is the side view and 5 toggles between orthographic and perspective. So from right ortho, I can see that from right there is kind of the rotating point from which we want to uh, rotate or close the uh, eyelids up and down. So with those two little edges selected, I'm going to press Shift S. And that brings up my snap menu. And from here, I can put my 3D cursor uh, right between those two selected edges. 
and that'll give me a place to rotate from if I change the way that I'm rotating in Blender. So I'm going to press Shift S and I'm going to select Cursor to Selected. And that's going to put my 3D cursor right in between, in the middle between those two edges. And that's handy because if I go back into Object Mode, and I change my rotation point. Right now it's set to medium point, uh, this little menu right here at the bottom of your uh, 3D viewport. Uh, it's set to, to medium point by, uh, by default. If I go to 3D cursor though, my gizmo uh, goes right to my 3D cursor, and that's because everything that I now move is gonna be, or rotate, is gonna be around the position of the 3D cursor. That's why we positioned it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode. And now if I select some of these uh, edges by holding shift after I select the first one, so let's select more than one, uh, and I go to my side view with the three key, and I press R, you'll see that it, they rotate. Whoops, you know what? I had soft selection turned on. If, if you don't know what soft selection is, it's this little menu down here, and it allows you to select more than one thing, um, or it kind of selects uh, objects or parts of the mesh around what you have selected. Uh, by default, that should normally be gray. Uh, I had it turned on, so I'll have to modify that in the file that I give you. Um, so if I go to the side view and press R, you'll notice that this, uh, or these edges that I have selected, are rotating around the 3D cursor. If I move that 3D cursor and I press R, you'll notice that those uh, edges rotate around where the 3D cursor is. So I'm going to go back and go Control Z a few times, or Control Z and select those two edges again, oopsie, there we go, uh, press shift S and select cursor to select it to put my 3D cursor back in the middle of those two edges, and now I'm going to select, um, let's say, that edge and hold shift and select a few more edges, and we're going to rotate these edges um, to a, a closed position. Now it's important that I have the blink shape key selected while I'm doing this, and so if I press 3 to go to my side view, and then kind of pan over, and we'll rotate those edges um, so that it, they're kind of meeting halfway at the eye. Now you might notice that your eyelid will break through the eye or crash through the eye. Uh, that's okay for now because we're going to now select this edge uh, loop, or at least part of it, and we'll go back to the side view and press R to rotate. Now if I want to see kind of how my eyelid is doing in terms of how far it is away from the eyeball, of course, after I let go, I can press Z, and then I can see that my eyeball is quite a bit, uh, or the eyelid is quite far out from the eyeball. So I could just press G and move that in, uh, and I could go back to solid view by pressing Z, of course. Now I might do some cheating here. I might go into my vertex select mode, and we might play around with the location. And that's okay, it is kind of cheating, uh, but you're really creating just different states for the mesh. Um, in this case. So I'm going to go back into edge select mode, select, uh, let's say, yeah, those ones, and we're going to rotate them around that um, 3D cursor again. So I'm going to press R. We really just want to um, keep everything nicely spaced out. Maybe I'll select these ones again, and we will go to the side view, and maybe what I'll do is I will press G to grab them and pull them forward a little bit and I'm going to press Z a few times to make sure that my eyelid isn't bulging out too much. You can really just kind of eyeball it, <laughs> pun intended, uh, for this process um, to see how you like the eyeball or the eyelid to look in its down position. You can see it's quite sticking out quite a bit, but I actually think that's okay. Let's go ahead and do the bottom edges as well. I don't actually need to select that edge or that edge right now, or any of these edges. I can just select that edge and these edges. And if I go to the side view now and rotate them up, um, I get a pretty good uh, result. Now you see that my eyelid is not uh, perfectly straight, so I'm gonna press R, and we're gonna do some, a little bit of manual fiddling here. So I'll select some vertexes there. And you'll notice that while you have your um, kind of pivot center set to the 3D cursor, your gizmo will not appear at your selection, which is okay. Uh, it's a little bit weird, but um, that's because we've changed the way, the way that our pivot center um, is acting, and that affects the gizmo. So there's my closed eyeball. And by the way, you can see everything happening on the other side as well, because we have the mirror modifier. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and move that forward a little bit. 
Let's select these two on the bottom and move them forward a little bit. Now I can see the eye kind of peeking through there, so I might actually move that one up. Um, and I can kind of see what the result's going to be over on uh, the other mirrored eyeball. Let's go ahead and move uh, that one up a little bit. Mm, okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode. And if I press tab again, I can see that because I'm on that blink shape key, it shows me the mesh um, in that state, in that shape key. If I click on basis, it'll show me the original state, and blink is the um, the blinked state. Now I forgot to do these edges down here, so I'm gonna go back into edge select mode, and I'm gonna select maybe yeah those two edges, and press three. And just because we don't want a very straight um, eyelid as it wraps around the eye, uh, we're gonna rotate that around. And I'll press Z and bring that in a little bit. And let's press Z again to go back into solid view and select maybe those bottom uh, uh, edges and rotate a little bit just so it's uh, it spaces out a little more. Yeah. And we'll play around with the vertexes a little bit so things are nice and, whoops, did not want to delete. <laughs> You cannot change uh, how many vertexes you have in these different states. I do not believe that will work, unfortunately. You have to be the, it has to be the, the same mesh in order to work. I'm not sure what would happen if you tried. Um, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, let's go ahead and press A maybe to check that out. Okay, looks good to me. Let's go ahead and press Tab to go back into object mode. Now, the reason why it switched back to the basis position is because we have this value set to zero. Um, because we have basis and blink um, shape keys, if I select blink and turn its value, it's uh, how much it affects the mesh up, you can see our blink take place. Now this isn't animated, we're just adjusting this value. But this gives us a, gives us a pretty good idea of what the result is going to be um, when we animate. So you can kind of check it out here, see how you like it. I might, I kind of think that in mine, uh, in my shape key, the uh, I did stick out a little bit too much when I close the eyes or when I uh, turn the value up on the shape key. You can see here that the is sticking out from the eye quite a bit, but actually I'm okay with that. Let's go ha go ahead and move on to animation. I'm going to save this file, save, and let's create some animation. For this, I need to create a timeline, and I'm going to create a dope sheet as well. So let's go ahead and drag this little um, crosshatch section down to make a second uh, window and let's go ahead and change this window type to a timeline and let's make that a little bigger and uh, duplicate this window again or divide it again and turn this bottom window now into a dope sheet. A dope sheet is like a timeline that uh, you can edit the and move and delete uh, the keyframes of anything. So to actually animate these shape keys we're going to do something a little bit strange, or unless you haven't done it before, and that is we have to actually create a keyframes with this value by putting our mouse over it and pressing I. Any um, of these dialog boxes that have value, or not dialog boxes, but uh, value entry little areas in the properties window, you can animate the value. And you do that by putting your mouse over that area, uh, over the the lighter colored area and pressing I. But before I do that, I'm gonna make sure I'm on, on the right uh, frame in my timeline or dope sheet. So I'm gonna go to frame zero and we're gonna make him with his eyes open at frame zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my mouse over that value zero and press I and it turns yellow and that means that there is a keyframe and you can confirm that by seeing over here in the dope sheet and on your timeline by looking at the yellow bar that you actually have made a keyframe of the key at zero. Now we don't want him to blink right away, we want him to keep his eyes open for a little bit. So we can either go down to a later point uh, in time, let's say 30 frames later, and put our mouse over this value again. You'll see that it's green, that means that there is no keyframe on our current frame, but there is animation. So green means that there is animation on that value, but not a keyframe at that um, certain frame. Um, now we could, so we could press I again, and that would insert a keyframe with value zero, uh, or we could just select the keyframe by right-clicking on it in the dope sheet, and then pressing Shift D to, du to duplicate that keyframe and sliding it down to frame 30. 
So now we have um, two keyframes that are the same, and that's why there's an orange bar between them. I think I didn't put it on the right frame. Let's go ahead. There we go. See that now that there is a keyframe on frame 30, this area turned uh, yellow. If I move that keyframe away, it turned green. That's because we're on frame 30. Let's go ahead and put that back on frame 30. Now I'm going to go five frames later, so I can press my arrow keys. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so we're on frame 35 now. And let's go ahead and change the value of the blink shape key. So I'm going to turn, turn it up, and he will blink. But there still isn't a keyframe there, and that's because I'm going to have to press the I key with my mouse over that value. There we go. So now if I zoom in on my dope sheet, you can see that new keyframe. So now if I scrub through my timeline, we have an animation of the shape key. Now they are blinking at the same time, and then that again is because we have that mirror modifier. Um, but this is really how they do facial animation. And they have to create a or all the possible um, different locations for any of the parts of the face that they want to be able to animate. Now a professional rig would actually have all these shape keys created for both left and right separately. And then they would all be controlled by bones. Um, and those facial bones would actually not distort the mesh as normal bones would in a whole character rig. But those bones would um, direct the shape keys and the value of the shape keys by how the bones move. That's more advanced than this video is intended to be. Um, but this is how you can animate um, facial movements in a fairly simple way just by creating shape keys for each individual part of the face that you want to affect. Now it is important to note that shape keys uh, only really affect what you change when you make a new shape key. So don't be afraid that if you make a shape key for both eyes blinking and then make a different shape key that say for the mouth opening and closing, those two don't count, cancel each other out. You can actually combine different shape keys. So if I were to make a new shape key with the mouth closed, uh, I could combine it and have the mouth closed and the eyes blinking at the same time. That does work. All right, so that's it for this video. I'm going to call this quits. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.